Hey developers, I'm Joxev, and in this tutorial you'll be learning how to make a Unity 3D walker controller. The tutorial will be split up into multiple parts. Part 1 will go over project setup as well as basic moving and jumping. In part 2 we'll add slope movement, and in part 3 we will start to add parkour mechanics. If you need help or get stuck, you can leave a comment below or join my Discord server from the description. Also, all of the code will be available on GitHub so you can access that through the description. Anyways, let's start the tutorial. Okay, I'm gonna start by making a new project. You don't have to, you can just um, keep it normal if you already have one. I'm gonna name it Basic Movement Tutorial, and then I'll just select the spot for it, and then create it. So it's loading in now, and then we're in a new project. Okay, right now I'm just importing a skybox, and then I'm going to do some, like, project setup stuff, but only visual, so you don't have to do this. You can if you want, and you can just copy my settings. Okay, so right now I'm making a folder, so I can basically separate the stuff I made from other assets, so core and third party. And then I'm, uh putting boxphobic into third party and scenes into core. Now I'm opening up the package manager so I can import pro builder and pro grids. You have to put the show preview packages or else pro grids won't show up. So yep, pro builder is, um, it's just gonna help me prototype levels so I don't have to spend as much time doing it with like unity primitives. You don't need to do this but it'll help me. I'm getting some prototype materials, so the scene looks alright. Again, you don't have to do this. Okay, right now I'm just docking the Pro Builder window at the top of the screen so I can access its functions easily. Now I'm just um, creating an empty so I can see where the center of the world is. I lock the grid. And then I create a new poly shape and just create a floor. You don't have to be precise because it automatically snaps. And then you just click enter to save the object. Okay, now I just deleted the compass object and I'm making an environment object, sort of like a folder. I'm putting a floor in it and then renaming it to floor. Now I'm just opening the Pro Builder material editor. So this way I can um, like assign the materials to the objects and then you can just hit alt and then a number to actually put them on the object. So I picked black, and then I just build a little scene so I can test the player. Okay, and then I drag those objects into the environment parent. Okay, so now I create an empty object that I'm gonna name uh, camera root, and it's gonna hold the camera, so I drag the camera under it. Okay, I reset the camera root's position, and then also reset the position of the camera, so they're both at zero, zero. And now I create another new game object and call it player. And then I create a capsule as a child of the parent, reset the position of the player, and then I just drag it up a little bit so it's up there. And then I add a rigid body, I freeze its rotation, and then set those two. So now I check his gravity to disable the gravity, because we're going to add our own. Then I create an empty under the player called orientation to store the rotation. Then inside of core, I create a new folder for scripts, create a new script called player movement and player input. Then I apply both of these scripts to the player. Okay, let's get the coding. You can double click the script to open it. First. You're going to want to, we're going to define a couple instance variables, a dragon for the orientation, a header to keep it organized, we're going to get another dragon for the movement speed, 
we're just um, gonna make a movement multiplier variable that'll come into play later. Got a reference to the rigid body and player input. And because those weren't dragons, we're using get component to get them in the start. And then we're gonna start a method for processing input, but we gotta make the input code first. Okay, so in the input script, we're gonna make a float for um, horizontal input and another one for vertical input. And then um, in update, we're gonna set it to get axis raw, which basically means it's gonna return either one, zero, or negative one, based on if it's A, nothing, or D and for vertical it's W or S. And then we're gonna make a movement direction vector in our movement code and it's gonna just, like save the direction we want to move in and we use this code to basically make it what direction you're facing as well as what input you're pressing. So, but yeah by taking the for the right and forward vectors. So then we call process input and update and just move it under then in fixed update, we're going to actually apply the force to the player. So we do add force, move direction, times the movement speed, and times the movement multiplier. And then we use the acceleration force mode. Okay, there's a couple more things we have to do before we test it, like drag in the orientation. Then we'll just move the camera to a better spot for viewing. And yeah, the guy's really slippery, so we're going to fix that. It's kind of a hacky solution for now, but trust me, we'll fix it in a few minutes. Just set the drag to 5. It should be fixed. Okay, now we're going to fix another bug. Basically, what happens if you move diagonally, the player actually moves faster than if you're moving straight. So just add dot normalize, because that way the diagonals are the same length as the straight lines. Okay, now add a new script called camera follow. And then add another script called player look. And then, yeah, drag camera follow into the camera root and player look onto the player. And we just gotta fix this real quick, put the hide inspector there. Just an issue. Now let's work on camera follow. So first it's just gonna need a target for what it should follow. So you just get the transform target. And then do just set its position to the target's position. That's the whole script. Okay, we're gonna write the code for the player look now. So first we're just gonna get a dragon for the camera root so we can actually rotate it. Then we're gonna get a dragon for the orientation so we can rotate the orientation. And then we're gonna lock the cursor so that way like you don't see it and you can't like use your cursor out of the window while you're playing. Then we're gonna go to the input stuff and add some mouse input. So we're just gonna get mouse X and mouse Y, just like horizontal and vertical. Then we're gonna do mouse X, the same thing as with the movement, just with the mouse instead. So now just take the hide inspector and move it for mouse Y. And then get a reference to the player input with serialized field. And then, yeah, make a variable x rot and y rot. They're going to be the rotation of the of the players looking. So x rot just subtracted by the mouse y. And then add um, the mouse x to the y rot because it's rotation. And then just clamp the x rot so you can't look too far up or too far down. And then just set the camera roots rotation to um, the X and Y rot as a quaternion. And set the orientation to just the uh, Y rot. Okay, so we gotta drag in a couple things before it'll work. So just drag the camera root, drag in the orientation, and then just drag the player input in. And now, um, we just gotta drag the um, we gotta make like a head object where the camera should be on the player. 
I like to put it at 0 0.9, 0 0.8, one of those. And then you just drag the, that into the camera root, and it should be working. There, we got the basics down. Next, we should add like a sensitivity, and then we'll add jumping. Okay, so the first thing we have to do for sensitivity is actually make the sensitivity configurable variables. Let's just float sensitivity x, and then also sensitivity y. And we're going to make them 10 by default. And then we just multiply them in the y and x rot calculations. Okay, and then we actually do have to multiply it by a constant just so the numbers are like easier to like visualize. Okay, so now let's just make a header for jumping variables. We'll make a jump force variable. We'll make a header for ground detection variables. And we'll make is grounded, ground distance. And then let's go and actually detect if you're grounded. So in update, just do is grounded equals physics.checksphere, which basically checks the sphere if there's anything. So you gotta um, pass in the position of our feet, which this math will give it to us. Except I think we're forgetting a variable, so let's just define it. Player height and ground detection. So now we can finish the equation. Okay, so now we just pass in the ground distance as the radius, and we're missing another variable. We need a ground mask so it knows what is the ground. So if we just pass in ground mask, then it knows what the ground is and won't check anything else. Okay, so we're gonna work on the jump input now, so I'll make a bool for it. And yeah, I'll make it hide the inspector so you don't see it. And then the jump input is gonna be get button down jump. The reason this works is because it's built into Unity's input system. If you wanted like a random key, there's a way to do that too. So then we have to detect if you're hitting the button and you're grounded. Then, well, we're gonna run the jump function, which we're making right now. Just put the jump in the if statement. And then we'll do rigidbody dot add force we'll add transform dot transform dot up so an upward force times the jump force and then with force mode dot impulse. Okay, so we gotta do some stuff. First let's create the ground layer. So just yeah, hit add layer and then select all the environment and put them on the ground layer. Then go on the player and set the ground mask to ground. But when we jump, we stay in the air because we don't have gravity yet. So yeah, let's fix that. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna have to do is define a gravity variable to vector three. So theoretically it could work in all directions, but we're not gonna support that yet. So let's scroll down and make a function called movement. I'm gonna just move the movement code into here and call it and fix update. And we're gonna make an if statement so the movement is different if you're on the ground or in the air. So we'll just move the current one into is grounded, and then else, this is if you're in the air. We'll copy it, but we'll also add the gravity force. So now it's accounting for gravity. And we'll make another header for drag, because we want the drag to be different if you're on the ground or in the air. So ground drag is 5. And then air drag is going to be 2. So then we're also going to make a variable for air resistance. And air resistance is going to be 0.45 by default. And then we'll go down to movement and we'll just multiply it by air resistance as well. Now we'll make a function for switching the drag based on if you're in the not. So basically the drag is ground drag if you're on the ground and if you're in the air the drag is going to be air drag. Okay and just remember to run switch drag in the update function. Okay, back in Unity, we're just going to make sure everything's designed, that we can play it and try it. So, everything seems to be working. If we jump, we fall back down to the ground, so it's looking pretty good. Of course, the slopes, like, are sort of working. They don't work on the way down, but that's just, like, a defect of the system. That'll all be fixed in the next episode. But there's one more bug, and it's this, I guess. So, let's fix that now. Okay, so create a new folder called physics materials, and then create a new physics material, and you can just call it player, and then set its friction zero, and then drag it onto the capsule. Now when you play it, the bug should be fixed. Yep. So yeah, this is um, 
the basics of the walker controller. We're gonna add slopes and step ups like for the stairs so it actually works correctly in the next episode. So um, hopefully this helped you 